When it started, no one thought anything of it. After all, it was just a game, right? A silly, harmless game to scare each other at sleepovers, passing time in classrooms, or around campfires. But for Amanda and her friends, Charlie Charlie became much more than just a game. It became a nightmare. It all began one summer evening in a small town in Ohio. Amanda and her three closest friends, Sarah, Mia, and Jake, had gathered at Amanda's house for a sleepover. They were the usual group, always together, always daring each other to do something spooky. On that night, Mia had brought up the Charlie Charlie game. Have you guys ever played it? She asked, her eyes lighting up with excitement. It's supposed to be super creepy. You ask this ghost named Charlie if he's there, and the pencils move by themselves. Amanda rolled her eyes. Sounds fake. But Sarah was intrigued. I saw something about it on YouTube. People were freaking out. Jake laughed, playing it cool. Come on, it's just a game. But despite their skepticism, curiosity got the better of them. They dimmed the lights, setting the mood for the challenge. Amanda grabbed a piece of paper and drew a cross on it, labeling one side yes and the other side no. Then, they balanced two pencils in a cross shape, just as the game instructed. Sitting in a circle around the makeshift board, the four of them exchanged uneasy glances. Amanda broke the silence, her voice low and shaky. Charlie, Charlie, are you here? At first, nothing happened. The pencils stayed perfectly still. Jake laughed again, louder this time, leaning back as if to say, I told you so. But then, it moved. The pencil rotated, slowly, unnaturally, pointing to yes. The room went dead silent. Jake's grin faltered. Sarah gasped, covering her mouth with her hand, while Mia's eyes widened in shock. Amanda's stomach twisted in fear. Did you see that? Sarah whispered. That wasn't the wind. That wasn't... Shh! Amanda interrupted, trying to calm the racing panic in her chest. It's probably just the way we balanced it. Don't freak out. But Mia, more excited than afraid, leaned in closer. Ask another question. Reluctantly, Amanda cleared her throat. Charlie, Charlie, will you hurt us? For a moment, nothing happened. But then the pencil twitched again, spinning with more force than before. It pointed to yes. Suddenly, the air in the room grew thick. It felt colder, much colder. A strange pressure weighed down on their chests, making it hard to breathe. Jake stood up abruptly, his face pale. All right. That's enough. I'm not playing anymore. Before anyone else could react, a loud knock echoed through the house. It sounded like it was coming from the front door, but then it happened again. Closer this time, like it was just outside Amanda's bedroom. Amanda's heart pounded in her chest as she whispered, Did you guys hear that? Jake nodded, eyes wide. We need to stop. Sarah, trembling now, muttered, What if we made him angry? Mia, still eager but now showing signs of fear, tried to lighten the mood. Maybe it's just part of the game. Maybe Charlie's just messing with us. But as soon as she said it, the temperature in the room dropped even more. Amanda could see her breath in the air, and a sudden gust of wind blew through the room, even though the windows were shut tight. The pencils flew off the table, as if an invisible hand had swatted them away. That was when the whispering started. Low, guttural voices seemed to come from all around them, surrounding the group. They couldn't make out any words, but the tone was unmistakable, angry, malevolent. Amanda's hands trembled as she stood, ready to bolt out of the room's tights, but the door slammed shut on its own. Charlie, stop, Mia yelled, her voice cracking. We're done. The whispers grew louder, harsher. The room felt suffocating as if the walls were closing in. Amanda reached for her phone, her fingers trembling as she tried to turn on, turn on and turn on the flashlight. The moment the beam of light hit the corner of the room, they saw it, a shadow, standing just beyond the edge of the light. It was tall, much too tall to be a person with long, spindly arms that stretched unnaturally toward them. Is that Charlie? Sarah's voice was barely a whisper. The shadow shifted, moving toward them slowly, its form distorted and wrong. Amanda felt frozen, paralyzed with fear. She wanted to scream, to run, but her body wouldn't respond. All she could do was stare as the thing drew closer, its shape becoming more defined. Suddenly, the lights flickered back on, and the shadow was gone. The pencils lay scattered across the floor, by, and the eerie coldness that had filled the room was replaced by an oppressive heat. Jake was the first to speak, his voice shaky. We need to leave. No one argued. They rushed out of the room, down the stairs, and out of the house. Amanda didn't even bother locking the door behind her. They ran 
not stopping until they reached the street corner. Only then did they dare to look back at the house, but it stood still, quiet and dark. Over the next few days, Amanda couldn't shake the feeling that something was watching her. Every time she was alone, she felt a presence, a cold, lingering shadow just outside her vision. Her friends felt it too. Jake reported strange noises in his house, while Sarah woke up to bruises on her arms that she couldn't explain. Mia, the one who had been the most eager to play, swore she saw the shadowy figure standing at the foot of her bed one night, just staring at her with hollow eyes. They never spoke of Charlie Charlie again. But the game had already taken its toll. Amanda moved out of that house with her family a few months later, but the feeling of being watched never left her. Even now, years later, she sometimes wakes up in the middle of the night, feeling the cold breath of something standing just inches from her face. Some say it was just a game. But Amanda knows the truth. Charlie wasn't a game. Charlie was real. Story number two. It was the summer of 2014 when Emily first heard about Charlie Charlie. A friend in her high school had brought up the game. A supposed way to communicate with a supernatural entity using nothing but two pencils and a piece of paper. Emily wasn't the type to believe in ghost stories or haunted games, but something about this one got under her skin. Come on, Emily, her friend Lily urged. It's just a silly game. Everyone's doing it. After days of pestering, Emily agreed. They gathered in Lily's basement, a small, dimly lit room that seemed to echo with the sound of their every move. The basement always had an eerie feel, cold with a draft that seemed to whisper through the walls, even when the windows were shut. Lily pulled out a piece of paper and drew the infamous cross pattern, labeling the quadrants with yes and no. Then, she carefully placed two pencils in the shape of a cross over the paper. Are you ready? Lily asked her voice dropping to a hush as she took her place next to Emily. Emily's hands were sweating, but she nodded, determined not to let her nerves show. Charlie, Charlie, are you here? Lily asked. For a moment, nothing happened. They both stared at the pencils, expecting them to move. The room was silent, save for the faint hum of a ceiling fan. Emily felt a strange sense of relief, thinking this was all just a joke. Then slowly, almost imperceptibly, the top pencil began to shift. It rolled toward the yes quadrant. Emily's breath caught in her throat. She glanced at Lily, who was now pale, her eyes wide with shock. Lily's voice quivered as she continued. Charlie, Charlie, do you want to play? Again, there was a pause. This time, the pencil moved faster, sliding firmly to yes. Emily, Lily whispered, her voice trembling. We should stop. But Emily, now fueled by a mix of fear and curiosity, pressed on. Charlie, what do you want? For a long moment, nothing happened. The pencil remained still, and the basement felt even colder than before. Then, just as Emily began to think they were imagining things, a loud bang came from the far corner of the room. Both girls screamed and jumped to their feet. Lily rushed to turn on the lights, her face white with terror. When the lights flickered on, the room was empty. No one else was there. The paper with the pencils remained on the floor, but something was different. The pencils had moved again, this time without them asking. <laughs> they both stood frozen as they saw the pencil now pointed to the word no. I'm done. I'm done, Lily shouted, grabbing Emily's arm. We're stopping this right now. But as Lily reached down to snatch the paper and pencils away, the lights in the room flickered once, twice, then went out entirely. In the pitch black, Emily could hear Lily breathing heavily beside her, but it was what she heard next that truly terrified her a faint, raspy whisper that echoed through the room. Charlie, Charlie, I'm here. Emily's blood ran cold. She squeezed Lily's arm as the whisper repeated itself, louder this time. I'm here. Suddenly, a blast of cold air hit them, so cold it burned their skin. Lily screamed, and in the chaos, they both bolted up the stairs, desperate to escape the basement. But just as they reached the door, it slammed shut in their faces. Lily! Emily screamed, pounding on the door. But Lily wasn't listening. She was clawing at the walls, her fingernails scraping the wooden panels as if something was pulling her away from Emily, back toward the darkness. And Emily grabbed Lily's arm and pulled with all her strength, but the cold air only intensified, swirling around them like an icy vortex. The whispering had grown louder, more insistent, filling the room with a sickening chorus of voices, all chanting the same thing. Charlie, Charlie, I'm here. I'm here, I'm here. And then, just as suddenly as it had begun, 
everything stopped. Everything stopped. The cold vanished, the voices fell silent, and the door to the basement creaked open. They didn't wait to understand what had happened. They bolted out of the basement, up the stairs, and out of the house without looking back. That night, Emily couldn't sleep. She couldn't shake the feeling that something, someone, was watching her. Every shadow in her room seemed to pulse with dark energy. She tried to convince herself it was just her mind playing tricks, but the dread gnawed at her. Over the next few days, strange things began happening. Lights in her house flickered uncontrollably and objects moved on their own, small things at first, like a cup or a picture frame. Then, the whispers started. Late at night, when the house was quiet, Emily could hear them faintly calling her name. Emily, 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 Charlie's here. It wasn't long before Emily began to see things, too. At the edge of her vision, she would catch glimpses of a dark figure standing in doorways, hovering near her bed at night. She would wake up drenched in sweat, her sheets twisted around her body as though someone had been pulling on them. Desperate for answers, she confronted Lily, but her friend was in no condition to help. Lily had stopped going to school. When Emily visited her, she found Lily lying in bed, pale and unresponsive. Lily's parents said she was just sick, but Emily knew the truth. Charlie hadn't let go of either of them. A week later, Emily woke to find the words, Charlie's here scratched into the wall beside her bed. The scratches were deep, as if someone had carved them with a blade. She screamed for her parents, but when they rushed in, the words were gone, leaving only faint impressions where they had been. The final straw came the following night. Emily woke in the middle of the night to find the shadow figure standing at the foot of her bed, its face a mask of darkness. And this time, it wasn't just watching. It lunged. Emily screamed and jumped out of bed, racing for the door, but it slammed shut before she could reach it. The figure was moving closer, its form twisting and contorting as it approached. Emily could hear the whispers again, louder than ever, filling her mind with a cacophony of voices all chanting the same thing. Charlie, Charlie, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. In the end, Emily ran. She fled the house, leaving her home, her family, and her life behind. She hasn't spoken to Lily since that night, and she refuses to ever play the Charlie Charlie game again. Because now, she knows it wasn't just a game. It was an invitation. Story number three. It started as a simple sleepover dare, something to kill the boredom on a rainy Friday night. Four friends, Josh, Emma, Lily, and Ben, sat around a dimly living room. The only sounds were the occasional rumbles of thunder outside and the soft hum of a ceiling fan overhead. Lily had brought up the idea. She'd read about it online, the Charlie Charlie Challenge. It seemed like harmless fun, like the Ouija board, but less serious. The challenge was supposed to summon a Mexican spirit named Charlie, who would answer questions using two pencils balanced on a piece of paper. They drew a crude cross on a sheet of paper, labeling the quadrants yes and no as the instructions directed. Emma and Josh took turns balancing the pencils, forming a delicate X shape. There was a moment of silence as everyone exchanged nervous glances. This is dumb, Ben muttered, rolling his eyes. It's just gonna fall over because of the fan or something. Just do it, Ben, Emma shot back. Unless you're chicken. He scoffed, leaning back in his chair. Fine. Charlie, Charlie, are you there? The group held its breath. For a few seconds, nothing happened. Then, slowly, the top pencil began to rotate ever so slightly before it pointed to yes. There was a collective gasp and everyone's eyes widened. That's just the wind or something, Josh whispered, but his voice lacked conviction. The air felt heavier, as if the room itself was holding its breath. Charlie, Charlie, will you speak to us? Emma asked next. Once more, the pencil shifted. It jerked to no this time, then stilled completely. See, Ben said, smirking. It's a joke. But Lily wasn't smiling. She was staring at the pencil, her face pale. No, wait, it's not supposed to move like that. I mean, not so quickly. They hesitated, unsure of what to do. Maybe it was just nerves or overactive imaginations, but there was something unsettling about the atmosphere. The room felt colder, and the flickering shadows seemed to stretch unnaturally long. Charlie, Charlie, are you angry? Josh asked, almost in a whisper. Silence. Then the pencil spun sharply to yes. A loud crash made everyone jump. They whipped around only to see a picture frame had fallen from the wall. The glass was shattered, the image, a family photo, distorted beneath jagged shards. 
Josh's heart hammered in his chest. Who did that? But no one answered. They all looked at each other with wide, fearful eyes. Let's stop, Lily whispered, her voice trembling. We should say goodbye. That's the only way to close the game. Goodbye, Charlie, Ben said quickly, his voice high and tight. We're done. They waited for a response, but nothing happened. The pencil remained still. Relieved, they sighed and started to stand up. But then Lily screamed. The pencil shot forward, rolling off the table and onto the floor. Then, as if pushed by some invisible force, it began to carve a line through the dust on the hardwood, stopping right in front of Lily's feet. Everyone froze. The house creaked and groaned around them. The silence felt deafening. Then, with a soft whisper that seemed to come from nowhere and everywhere at once, they heard it. Lily. Emma's breath hitched. Did, did you hear that? No, Ben said quickly, backing away. No, no, no. We're done. We're done. But the whisper came again, stronger this time, and unmistakable. Lily? They scrambled to their feet, knocking over chairs and tripping over one another. Lily felt something cold brush against her arm, like fingers made of ice, and shrieked, stumbling backward. Her eyes darted around the room, wide with terror. We need to leave, Josh said, grabbing her by the arm and dragging her toward the door. But when they reached the handle, it wouldn't turn. He twisted and pulled, but the door wouldn't budge. Then, all the lights went out. They stood in pitch darkness, hearts pounding, breaths coming in, panicked gasps. Guys, Emma's voice was barely a whisper. What's happening? Suddenly, they heard it. The sound of pencils scratching on paper. Slowly, methodically, the noise filled the room, surrounding them. Josh fumbled for his phone, turning on the flashlight. The small beam of light cut through the darkness, landing on the paper they'd used for the game. Except now... The paper was covered in writing. Lily, Lily. The name was scrawled over and over in a frenzy, the letters jagged and uneven, as if written in a fit of rage. But what made it worse was that none of them had been near the paper. The pencil that had fallen lay still on the floor. Who, who's doing this? Ben shouted, his voice cracking. But they all knew the answer. Something had answered them. Something was there in the room with them. We have to get out. Lily whispered, shaking uncontrollably. Please, please let us out. Then the whisper came again, right next to her ear. Lily, come play. She screamed, jerking away. The door burst open suddenly as if an unseen force had unlocked it. They didn't hesitate. They ran, stumbling out into the hallway, down the stairs, crashed, and out into the stormy night. None of them looked back. They spent the night huddled in Josh's car, parked far away from his house, it was hours before the rain let up and the first hints of dawn broke the sky. No one spoke. They just sat in stunned silence, too terrified to even think of returning. The next morning, they went back. Josh's parents were home, asking where they'd gone, but none of them dared mention Charlie. They went to the living room, and to their shock, the paper and pencils were gone. The room looked completely undisturbed, except for one thing. Carved into the wood of the table, right where Lily had been sitting, was a single word. Mine. They never played the game again. But for weeks afterward, Lily swore she heard the whisper. At night, when she was lying in bed, just on the edge of sleep, she'd hear it, soft and low. Lily, come play. One night, she woke up to find a piece of paper on her bedside table. A single pencil lay across it, balanced perfectly. And in the dark, she read the words written in spidery, frantic handwriting. Charlie, Charlie, are you there? She screamed, throwing the paper away, but the pencil didn't move. It just lay there, still and quiet. And then the whisper came again. Yes. Story number four. It was a quiet, overcast afternoon when Emma first heard about the Charlie Charlie challenge. Her younger brother, Lucas, burst into her room, excitement in his eyes. Emma, have you heard of Charlie Charlie? It's this crazy game where you talk to a ghost and it actually answers. He waved his phone around, showing her a video of two girls screaming as pencils moved across a piece of paper. Emma rolled her eyes. That's just a dumb internet trend. You really believe that? Lucas shrugged. People say it works. Want to try it? At 16, Emma thought she was too old for childish ghost games, but part of her was curious. Lucas was only 12 and always getting into the latest online crazes. She sighed and put down her book. Fine, but if this is some lame joke, you owe me ice cream. They gathered supplies in the kitchen, a piece of paper, two pencils, and a quiet corner of the dining room. 
Emma felt silly as she helped Lucas draw the cross on the paper, labeling the quadrants yes and no. The whole thing looked ridiculous. But once the pencils were carefully balanced, the room took on a different atmosphere, a kind of heavy, still silence that seemed to hum with anticipation. Lucas leaned in close, his voice hushed with excitement. Charlie, Charlie, are you here? For a long moment, nothing happened. Emma almost laughed at how serious Lucas was taking it. But just as she was about to tease him, the top pencil began to rotate ever so slowly until it pointed directly to yes. Emma's smile faded. How did you do that? Lucas looked just as surprised as she felt. I didn't do anything. They sat in silence for a moment, staring at the pencils. Emma felt a shiver run down her spine. Okay, let's stop. This is stupid. But Lucas was too intrigued to stop now. He leaned closer to the paper, his voice barely a whisper. Charlie, Charlie, do you want to hurt us? Emma shot him a sharp look. Lucas, don't ask that. But it was too late. The pencil twitched, then spun with more force, pointing again to yes. The room suddenly felt colder, and Emma's stomach dropped. The house, usually filled with the comforting sounds of the outdoors, seemed unnervingly quiet. Even the birds outside had gone silent. Emma stood up quickly, her heart pounding. Okay, game's over. This is too creepy. Lucas, looking pale now, nodded and stood too. But as they turned to leave the room, a loud crash echoed from upstairs. It sounded like something heavy had fallen, but they hadn't heard anyone else in the house. Emma's parents were still at work. Did you hear that? Lucas whispered, his voice trembling. Stay here, Emma commanded, her heart thudding in her chest. She grabbed her phone for light and cautiously made her way toward the staircase. Each step felt like it echoed through the house, the air growing thicker as she approached the second floor. When she reached her parents' bedroom, the door was slightly ajar, though she was sure it had been closed earlier. She pushed it open and her breath caught in her throat. The large mirror on the wall had shattered, shards of glass scattered across the floor. But what was even more terrifying was the writing that had appeared on the wall above the dresser, written in what looked like smeared lipstick. He's here. Emma stumbled backward, her hands trembling. She spun around and raced back downstairs, nearly tripping in her haste. We need to go. Now, she gasped as she grabbed Lucas's arm. What happened? Lucas asked, his voice barely audible. Just move, Emma urged, pulling him toward the front door. But as they reached the foyer, the door slammed shut with a deafening bang, locking them inside. The temperature dropped rapidly, and a suffocating pressure filled the air, making it hard to breathe. Lucas clung to Emma, his earlier excitement gone, replaced with raw terror. What's happening? Emma didn't have an answer. All she could think about was getting out. She tried the door again, but it wouldn't budge. Then, out of the corner of her eye, she saw it. Something dark, a shadow, moving slowly down the hallway. It wasn't just a trick of the light. It was a figure, tall and impossibly thin, with limbs that seemed too long and a face that was obscured in darkness. Emma backed away, pulling Lucas with her. Stay behind me, she whispered, her voice shaking. The shadow moved closer, its form shifting and twisting unnaturally as it approached. Emma could feel the coldness radiating from it, an icy chill that pierced her skin. Then a voice, soft, barely more than a hiss, filled the room. Charlie. Charlie. Emma's legs felt like lead as the figure inched closer, its whispering growing louder, more insistent. The pressure in the air became unbearable, as if the entire house was collapsing inward, crushing them. In a final desperate move, Emma grabbed Lucas and ran toward the back door. This time, it flung open with a loud creak, and they burst out into the yard, gasping for breath as they stumbled into the sunlight. Once outside, the air felt lighter, the heavy, suffocating presence gone. But the fear lingered. They looked back at the house, now eerily quiet, as if nothing had happened. Emma didn't know what they had just encountered. Whether it was Charlie or something worse, she wasn't sure. All she knew was that the game had unleashed something, something that wasn't meant to be disturbed. That night, Emma couldn't sleep. Every creak of the house made her flinch. Every shadow in the corner of her room sent chills down her spine. But it was Lucas who suffered the most. Over the next few days, he became quieter, withdrawn, his once bright eyes dark with fear. Then the nightmare started. Every night, Lucas would wake up screaming, claiming he saw the shadowy figure standing at the foot of his bed, whispering his name over and over again. 
Emma didn't want to believe it, but she knew deep down that the game had left its mark on them both. Some doors, once opened, can never be closed. Story number five. It was a rainy Friday evening when Maria, her best friend Jess, and their group of friends gathered at Jess's house for a sleepover. The power had flickered off a couple of times due to the storm, but that only added to the fun atmosphere. They had all heard of Charlie Charlie, the viral game where you summon a spirit to answer yes or no questions. But none of them truly believed it was real. Let's try it, Jess suggested with a mischievous grin, pulling out a piece of paper and two pencils. Maria wasn't so sure. She had heard rumors that something dark surrounded the game, that it was more than just a childish prank. But not wanting to seem scared in front of her friends, she went along with it. They all gathered around the coffee table, Jess in the middle as she drew a cross on the paper and labeled the quadrants yes and no. She carefully balanced the two pencils into a cross shape on top of the paper. Okay, here we go, Jess said, her voice full of anticipation. She looked around at her friends, then leaned closer to the paper. Charlie, Charlie, are you here? The group fell into a tense silence, eyes glued to the pencils. Maria could feel her heart pounding in her chest, but she kept her face calm, not wanting to show her nerves. For a moment, nothing happened. Just as one of their friends, Hannah, started to laugh, the pencil slowly eerily began to turn. It slid across the paper, pointing directly to the yes quadrant. A chill ran down Maria's spine. Her laughter died in her throat as the others gasped. Jess's smile wavered, but she continued the game. Charlie. Charlie, Jess said cautiously. Are you a good spirit? The room fell into an unnatural stillness, as if the very air around them had grown heavier. The pencil didn't move this time, but Maria could feel a coldness in the room, creeping into her bones. Maybe we should stop, Maria whispered, glancing at her friends. Jess hesitated, but she seemed determined to finish what she had started. One more question, Jess said. Charlie, Charlie, will you leave us alone? They all held their breath as the pencil trembled, and then slowly, deliberately, it rolled to the no. The atmosphere in the room shifted instantly. It felt as if a dark cloud had descended over them, the light from the storm outside flickering ominously through the windows. Maria's heart raced as Jess's face drained of color. We need to end this, Maria urged, her voice sharp with fear. But before anyone could move, a loud knock echoed from the front door. The girls froze. Who could that be? Hannah asked, her voice quivering. No one had heard a car pull up, and the house was located on a quiet street. The storm outside raged on, like, and there was no way anyone would be out in that weather. Jess stood, her face pale but determined. I'll check it out. Maria grabbed her arm. Don't. We should just forget this game and stay together. But Jess shook her head, prying her arm free. It's probably nothing. Reluctantly, Maria followed her toward the door. The knocking had stopped but the unsettling feeling in the pit of her stomach only grew stronger. Jess unlocked the door and slowly pulled it open. No one was there. See? Jess said with a shaky laugh. Probably just the wind. But Maria wasn't convinced. Something about the silence outside felt wrong. There was no wind, no rain splashing against the pavement, no sound of rustling leaves, just an oppressive, thick quiet. When they turned back to the living room, the rest of the group was huddled together, staring at the paper. The pencil had moved again without anyone touching it. It was pointing to no. That wasn't like that before, Hannah said, her voice barely a whisper. Maria's hands began to tremble. We need to stop this. We need to end the game properly. Jess nodded, finally looking scared. Charlie, Charlie, can we stop playing? The pencil didn't move. The room grew colder, so cold that Maria could see her breath in the air. She could feel something wrong, a presence in the room with them, something watching, waiting. Suddenly, the lights went out. The entire house plunged into darkness, and the girls screamed. Turn the lights back on, someone shouted. But it wasn't possible. The power was out because of the storm. They fumbled for their phones, using the flashlights to light up the room. But in the dim glow, Maria saw something that made her blood turn to ice. A shadow long, tall, and unnaturally thin, was standing in the corner of the room, watching them. It wasn't the shadow of one of the girls. It was something else entirely, looming and stretching as if it was alive. Jess! Maria's voice wavered. Do you see that? Jess turned, her phone shaking in her hand, and her face twisted into horror as she saw it too. 
The shadow moved, inching closer to them, though there was no sound, no footsteps. Run! Maria shouted, grabbing Jess's arm as they bolted for the front door. They sprinted outside into the rain, not daring to look back, their breaths coming in ragged gasps. They didn't stop until they reached the end of the street, panting and drenched. Did you see that? Jess gasped, tears mixing with the rain on her cheeks. What was that thing? I don't know, Maria whispered, her whole body trembling. But it wasn't Charlie. From that night on, strange things kept happening to them. Jess and Maria both heard whispers at night, soft voices calling their names. Doors in their houses would open on their own, lights would flicker, and worst of all, the shadow appeared again. It followed them. Everywhere they went, it was there, just at the edge of their vision, disappearing before anyone else could see it. No matter what they did, they couldn't escape it. A few weeks later, Jess disappeared. She had been acting strangely, more paranoid with each passing day. Her parents said she never came home from school and no one had seen her since. Maria was devastated, but deep down, she knew the truth. Charlie had come to collect. Story number six. Mia had always loved sleepovers, but this one felt different. It was supposed to be a fun night with just her and her two best friends, Jenna and Sophie. They'd planned for junk food, a horror movie marathon, and scary games. But when Sophie suggested the Charlie Charlie challenge, the mood shifted. Come on, it'll be fun, Sophie urged, already setting up the game. She grabbed a piece of paper and drew a cross in the middle, writing yes and no in the quadrants. She balanced two pencils and a precarious X on top of each other. The eerie makeshift setup sat in the center of Mia's living room, illuminated only by the dim light of a few candles. I don't know if this is a good idea, Mia muttered, glancing around nervously. The house seemed unnaturally quiet tonight, the kind of silence that pressed in on your ears, making your heart beat louder. It's just a game, Jenna said with a dismissive wave. But her smile was tense, and she kept looking at the pencils as if expecting them to move on their own. They gathered around the paper. The wind howled outside, rattling the windows. The trees cast skeletal shadows through the curtains, twisting and writhing as if alive. All right, Sophie said, her voice soft, almost reverent. Charlie, Charlie, are you here? For a moment, nothing happened. They waited, holding their breath. Then, ever so slowly, the top pencil began to turn. It wobbled, then pointed to, yes. Mia's heart skipped a beat. Did, did you see that? It's just a draft, Jenna whispered, but her eyes were wide. Or maybe it's just a trick of the balance. But then Sophie asked, Charlie, Charlie, do you want to play? The pencil shifted again, quicker this time, jerking to yes, so fast that all three girls jumped. Mia's mouth went dry. She glanced at Jenna, who was biting her lip, and then at Sophie, whose excitement seemed to have faded into unease. This is creepy, Mia said, reaching out. Let's just say goodbye. Before she could finish, a strange noise echoed through the room. It was faint, like a far-off whisper. The girls froze, straining to hear. Did you hear that? Jenna breathed. They looked around, but there was no one else in the house. Mia's parents were away for the weekend, and her younger brother was staying at a friend's. It was just them, or so they thought. Ask it something else, Jenna said, voice trembling. Sophie hesitated, then whispered, Charlie, Charlie, are you alone? The pencil trembled, then spun to no. Mia's pulse raced. What does that mean, she asked, voice tight. Maybe it's saying there's more than one spirit, Jenna suggested. But she looked pale, and her hands were shaking. They were all silent, staring at the paper, when suddenly the whisper came again, clearer this time. It sounded like a child's voice, soft and sing-song. Hello. Mia's blood turned to ice. She looked at the others. Who, who said that? It wasn't me, Jenna whimpered, backing away. Me neither, Sophie cried, clutching Mia's arm. The whisper came again, and this time it was louder. Come play with me. The girls screamed, stumbling back from the table. The pencils spun wildly, knocking over as if pushed by an invisible hand, we have to stop it, Mia shouted. We have to say goodbye. Goodbye, Charlie. Jenna screamed, tears streaming down her face. Goodbye, goodbye. But it didn't work. The whispering continued, growing louder, more insistent. Come play, come play. Suddenly the lights flickered, then went out completely. The room was plunged into darkness, save for the weak flickering of the candles. Shadows loomed larger, twisting unnaturally across the walls, 
turn on the flashlight, Sophie cried, fumbling for her phone. But when she finally managed to switch it on, the beam cut through the dark and landed on something impossible. A small figure stood in the corner, just beyond the reach of the light. It was the size of a child, but its silhouette was wrong, too thin, too angular. Its head was tilted at an odd angle as if its neck was broken. The whisper came again, and this time it came from right next to them. Come play with me. The figure moved, stepping forward fry, its limbs jerking and twitching unnaturally. The girls screamed and scrambled back, knocking over the candles in their panic. Mia felt her back hit the wall, her heart hammering so hard she thought it might burst. Please, leave us alone, she sobbed, tears blurring her vision. But the figure didn't stop. It stepped into the light and Mia caught a glimpse of its face. Pale, sunken eyes stared out of a gaunt, hollow face. Its mouth was stretched into a wide, unnatural grin. Play with me, Mia screamed, squeezing her eyes shut. When she opened them again, the figure was gone. The room was silent. Even the whispering had stopped. Mia, Jenna whispered, voice shaking. Mia turned. The paper was gone. The pencils, too. There was no sign of the game they'd been playing. It was as if it had never been there. What? What just happened? Sophie asked, trembling violently. I don't know, Mia whispered, but we need to get out of here. They didn't waste any time. Grabbing their phones and keys, they ran out of the house, stumbling down the driveway and into the street. They kept running, not stopping until they were several blocks away. Mia's parents returned the next morning to find her sitting on the neighbor's porch, staring blankly at the sky. It took them a long time to coax the story out of her, and even longer for Mia to feel safe in her own home again. But the worst part was that the whispers never truly stopped. Every night, just as she was drifting off to sleep, she'd hear it, soft and faint, just outside her window. Come play with me. And sometimes, when she was alone in the house, she'd catch a glimpse of a small figure standing just out of sight, watching her with sunken eyes and that terrible twisted grin. She moved away months later, but it didn't help. The whispers followed her. Now, every time she hears a child's voice in the dark, she freezes, waiting for the words she dreads most of all, come play, forever. Story number seven. It was the night of the school Halloween party, and Danny, Brandon, and their friends were restless. They had all gathered at Julia's house, tucked away on a quiet street in a small New England town. The decorations from the party still littered the living room, fake cobwebs, plastic skeletons, and dim orange lights. But the group wasn't quite ready to call it a night. I know what we should do, Julia said, her eyes twinkling with mischief. Let's play Charlie Charlie. Danny felt a strange chill crawl down her spine. She had heard about the game before a paranormal challenge where you supposedly summoned a ghost named Charlie by asking questions and waiting for the pencils to move. Most people swore it was just a silly trend, but others whispered about terrifying experiences. That game is so fake, Brandon scoffed, but there was an edge to his voice, like he wasn't entirely convinced. I don't know, Danny replied, her voice quieter than usual. I heard about this girl from school who played it and, well, she's different now. She won't even talk about what happened. Exactly, Julia chimed in. It's perfect for tonight. Come on, it's Halloween. If there's any night to mess with a ghost, it's tonight. Brandon rolled his eyes. You guys are scared of a ghost named Charlie? That's not even a scary name. But despite his bravado, the group gathered around the coffee table, arranging two pencils and a cross on top of a piece of paper that Julia had quickly scrawled on. One axis said yes, and the other no. Danny felt the tension in the room thicken as they sat in a circle, the only sound being the quiet hum of the fridge in the next room. Julia grinned as she dimmed the lights. Okay, let's start. I'll go first. Taking a deep breath, she leaned forward and asked, Charlie, Charlie, are you here? The pencils remained perfectly still. Danny let out a sigh of relief, half embarrassed that she had let herself get so worked up. Told you it's fake, Brandon said with a smirk. But just as he spoke, the top pencil twitched, slowly rotating until it pointed to yes. Everyone froze. Danny's heart skipped a beat. She quickly glanced at Brandon, but his smirk was gone, replaced by a look of unease. Okay, okay, someone must have moved it, Brandon muttered, looking around at the others. No way, Julia said, her face pale but her voice steady. No one touched it. A heavy silence fell over the room. 
Danny felt her palms grow clammy, her breath shallow. She wished they had never started this stupid game. Something didn't feel right. Something was off. Julia leaned in again, this time with more caution. Charlie, Charlie, do you mean us harm? For a moment, nothing happened. Then, without warning, the pencil jerked violently toward yes, the movement so sudden that Danny jumped back. I think we should stop, Danny said, her voice barely above a whisper. Julia hesitated, but nodded. Okay, we'll stop. We just need to say goodbye first. Charlie, Charlie, can we stop, she asked. But this time, the pencils didn't move. They stayed perfectly still, even as the air in the room seemed to grow colder. Danny's skin prickled, and she felt a weight press down on her chest, making it hard to breathe. She glanced toward the window, where she thought she saw a shadow move, only for it to disappear when she blinked. I don't like this, Danny muttered, standing up. We should leave. Just calm down, Brandon said, though his voice was shaky. He reached for the pencils, intending to remove them from the paper, but as his fingers brushed the top pencil, the lights in the house flickered and then went out completely, plunging the room into darkness. Julia let out a sharp gasp, and Danny heard the sound of chairs scraping as everyone scrambled to stand. Panic surged through her, and she fumbled for her phone, using its flashlight to pierce through the thick darkness. What the hell? Brandon muttered, his bravado finally gone. Julia, where's the breaker? It's in the basement, Julia replied, her voice trembling. But I'm not going down there. We should leave, Danny insisted, her voice tight with fear. She started for the door, but as she reached it, the doorknob wouldn't turn. It was jammed, like someone had locked it from the outside. Brandon rushed over to help her, but even his strength couldn't budge the door. It's stuck, he muttered under his breath. This isn't possible. And then from behind them, a soft tapping sound echoed through the room. Tap, tap, tap. It was coming from the table. Danny spun around, her flashlight shaking in her hand. The pencils, still lying on the paper, began to rotate on their own, faster and faster until they spun off the paper entirely, clattering to the floor. A cold wind swept through the room, even though the windows were all closed. The hair on the back of Danny's neck stood up, and she swore she could hear whispering, soft and indistinct, coming from the corners of the room. Charlie? Julia whispered, as if not fully believing it herself. Is that you? The whispers grew louder, more frantic, as if something or someone was circling them. Danny's heart raced as her flashlight flickered, casting eerie shadows across the walls. She could feel the presence of something, something cold and dark, closing in around them. Suddenly, a loud crash came from upstairs, like heavy footsteps stomping across the floorboards. Everyone froze, their eyes wide with fear. Is someone else here? Danny whispered. But they all knew the answer. There was no one else in the house. We have to get out of here, Brandon shouted, making a dash for the back door. He grabbed the handle and pulled, but it too was stuck as if the entire house had trapped them inside. And then they saw it. A figure, tall and thin, its face hidden in shadow, stood at the bottom of the stairs. Its long, spindly arms reached out toward them, and though it had no visible features, Danny could feel its gaze fixed on her as cold and empty as the void. Run, Danny screamed, grabbing Julia's arm and pulling her toward the hallway. They stumbled over each other, frantic, desperate to find another way out. As they ran, Danny could hear the figure behind them, its footsteps heavy and deliberate. It was coming for them, slowly but surely, and she knew they didn't have much time. But no matter how fast they ran or how many doors they tried, every exit was blocked, every window sealed shut. The house had become a prison, and the figure, a manifestation of the game, was hunting them. Finally, cornered in the upstairs bedroom, Danny turned to face it. The figure stood in the doorway, its presence filling the room with an overwhelming sense of dread. I'm sorry, Danny cried out. We didn't mean to summon you. We didn't mean it. But the figure didn't respond. It only moved closer, its dark form looming over them, and then everything went black. Story number eight. It was the last day of school before summer break, and Emma, Jake, and their friends were buzzing with excitement. The group of six had decided to have a final sleepover before everyone went their separate ways for vacation. Emma, the skeptical one of the group, couldn't believe what Jake brought up during the night's conversation. Let's play Charlie Charlie, Jake said, grinning like he had just discovered a hidden treasure. Emma frowned. You know that's just a stupid internet game, right? It's not real. I don't know about that. 
Jake shot back. Some people say it's more, more than just a game. Some people say Charlie is a real spirit. The others, intrigued, immediately agreed, despite Emma's reservations. They were in Jake's basement, a dimly lit room with old furniture, dusty walls, and a creaky floor. It had a spooky vibe even without a supposed ghost game. Jake grabbed a piece of paper and drew a simple cross on it, labeling the quadrants with yes and no. Two pencils were placed in a cross formation on top of the paper, delicately balanced. The rest of the group gathered around the table, the air thick with nervous energy. Emma stayed in the back, watching cautiously. All right, I'll start, Jake said. Charlie, Charlie, are you here? For a moment, nothing happened. Then, the top pencil wobbled ever so slightly before it rolled slowly to point at yes. Everyone froze. A shiver ran down Emma's spine, though she still tried to convince herself it was just gravity or the air moving. But no windows were open, and the basement felt like a vacuum, stale and stagnant. Jake grinned, but it didn't reach his eyes. See? Told you. Let me ask something, said Rachel, one of their friends, her voice shaking slightly. Charlie, Charlie, do you mean us any harm? The pencil vibrated, then slowly spun again, pointing toward, yes. A cold wave of dread washed over the room. Emma crossed her arms, pretending she wasn't phased, but her stomach churned. This wasn't fun anymore. We should stop, she muttered. This is stupid. Jake smirked. Come on, Emma. You don't actually believe this is real, do you? Before Emma could respond, a loud thud echoed from the back of the basement. Everyone jumped. Rachel shrieked, and the others spun toward the sound. The far wall of the basement had a heavy, old mirror hanging crookedly, reflecting nothing but shadows. But now, something was different. The mirror wasn't crooked anymore. It had straightened itself out. Jake, trying to maintain his bravado, walked toward the mirror. Relax. Probably just the house settling. But as he reached the mirror, his face paled. Guys, come here. The others hesitated, but curiosity won out. They approached Jake, who was standing frozen in front of the mirror, staring at it. The reflection showed the group just as expected, but there was something wrong. There was an extra figure standing among them. It was tall, shadowy, and barely visible, but it stood behind Rachel, its hand resting lightly on her shoulder. Rachel turned sharply as if she could feel it, but no one was there. What the? Emma's voice caught in her throat. Is this this part of the game? Rachel whispered, her face ghostly pale. This isn't funny. Jake took a step back from the mirror, his hands shaking. I don't think this is a joke. Suddenly, the lights flickered and a cold breeze swept through the room. Everyone panicked, darting their eyes around, trying to understand where the cold was coming from. The lights flickered again, and when they came back on, the mirror shattered. The glass exploded outwards, narrowly missing the group as they ducked and screamed. The pencils on the table spun wildly, the top one whipping around violently until it flung itself across the room, hitting the wall with a sharp crack. Emma stood, heart pounding, her mind racing. This was no game anymore. Something had been unleashed. We need to stop this, Emma shouted, her voice desperate. We need to say goodbye. But as she moved toward the paper, a force, something unseen, shoved her back, knocking her into the wall. She gasped for breath. Fentis feeling icy fingers grip her arms for just a second before releasing her. The others rushed to her, but their attention was quickly diverted when the door at the top of the basement stairs slammed shut with a deafening bang. We're trapped, Jake whispered, his tough guy persona now completely gone. We're stuck down here. Rachel began crying, her whole body shaking. It's him. It's Charlie. He's here, isn't he? Emma struggled to her feet, wincing from the impact but she wasn't about to give up. We have to end the game. We have to close it. But when they looked at the paper, the words yes and no had vanished, as though the ink had bled into the paper and disappeared. Only the faint outline of the cross remained. The paper, what happened to it? Hannah, another friend, whispered, her voice trembling. Before anyone could answer, the cold intensified. The air around them grew heavy, thick, and suffocating. The room itself seemed to shrink, the shadows in the corners growing longer and darker. The whispers started next. At first, they were faint, indistinct murmurs that could be brushed off as the wind or a trick of the mind. But soon, they grew louder, more coherent. Charlie! Charlie! The voice was low and raspy, echoing off the walls. It was close. Too close. The group huddled together, paralyzed with fear. Jake tried to be brave one last time, stepping forward. Charlie! We didn't mean any harm. We're sorry. 
The voice didn't stop. Instead, it got louder, angrier, and the temperature plummeted. Suddenly, Jake was yanked backward, pulled by an invisible force that dragged him across the floor. He screamed, flailing as he was pulled toward the darkest corner of the room. Help me! Help me! Jake's voice was desperate, filled with terror. Emma and the others tried to grab him, but something held them back, as if a barrier had formed between them. Jake's screams echoed through the basement as he disappeared into the shadows, and then, silence. Only the soft, eerie whispering remained. Emma's heart pounded in her chest, and tears filled her eyes. We need to go. We have to leave now. But the door wouldn't budge. They were trapped, and whatever had taken Jake was still in the room, lurking, waiting. The game hadn't ended, and neither had the nightmare. Story the end. Story number nine. David had always been a skeptic. Ghosts, demons, and urban legends were just stories to him. Nothing more than campfire tales meant to scare kids. So when his younger cousin Jake brought up the Charlie Charlie challenge one night, he laughed it off. Come on, you're not really scared of some made-up spirit, are you? David teased, shaking his head as Jake set up the game on the kitchen table. Jake had insisted on trying it since his friends at school had dared him, and David, always the dismissive older cousin, agreed to supervise. It's just pencils and paper, Jake, David continued. Nothing's going to happen. Jake nodded, but his hands were shaking slightly as he drew the cross on the sheet of paper, writing yes and no in the quadrants. He carefully balanced two pencils in the shape of a fragile X. The kitchen felt unnaturally quiet, and the cold hum of the refrigerator seemed deafening. Charlie, Charlie, are you here? Jake whispered, his voice barely audible. David rolled his eyes, leaning back in his chair. You need to say it louder, or your imaginary friend can't hear you. Charlie, Charlie, are you here? Jake repeated, louder this time. The pencils remained still. The seconds ticked by, and David was about to make another sarcastic comment when the top pencil moved. It wobbled, as if caught by a sudden gust of wind, and then spun slowly to yes. David sat up, his smile fading. He leaned closer, inspecting the setup. How did you do that? Jake looked up at him, eyes wide. I didn't do anything. David frowned, staring at the pencils. He was sure it was just a fluke, a coincidence. But something about the way the pencil had moved, so deliberate, so smooth, made his skin prickle. All right, fine. It moved. So what? David shrugged, but his voice sounded uncertain even to himself. Ask it something else. Um, Charlie, Charlie, will you talk to us? Jake asked, swallowing hard. For a long moment, nothing happened. Then, slowly, the pencil began to move again. This time, it shifted directly to no. David let out a breath he didn't realize he'd been holding. See? It's just... But before he could finish, the lights in the kitchen flickered. They both jumped, staring at the overhead bulbs as they buzzed and dimmed, then flared back to life. That was weird, Jake murmured, glancing around nervously. Yeah, weird, David echoed. His eyes darted around the kitchen. Everything looked normal, the stove, the sink, the fridge, but there was something off. The air felt colder, and there was a faint scent of something rotten, like meat left out too long. Let's ask it another question, Jake said hesitantly. David shook his head. Maybe we should just stop. This is stupid, and... But Jake wasn't listening. He leaned forward, eyes locked on the paper. Charlie, Charlie, are you alone? The pencil whipped around so violently that it nearly fell off the table. It landed on no. David felt a chill run down his spine. He stared at the paper, then at Jake, who looked like he was about to cry. What does that mean? Jake whispered. David swallowed. It means nothing. It's just a game, remember? But then something in the kitchen changed. The lights dimmed again, and the shadows in the corners seemed to stretch, twisting and writhing as if alive. A low, creaking noise echoed through the room like wood bending under immense pressure. Charlie, Charlie, Jake stammered, his voice trembling. Who's with you? The pencil moved so fast that it was a blur, spinning back and forth before landing on yes. Yes? David repeated, his voice tight. That's not even an answer. A loud bang cut him off. They both jumped, eyes darting to the source of the sound. The kitchen door, which led down to the basement, had slammed shut. Slowly, it creaked open again, revealing a yawning darkness beyond. What the hell? David breathed, his heart pounding. Charlie, Charlie, did you do that? Jake asked, his voice barely a whisper. The pencil didn't move. The house fell silent. The only sound was their ragged breathing. Then, from somewhere deep in the basement, they heard it. 
a soft rhythmic tapping like someone gently knocking on wood. Tap, 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 tap. David stood up so fast that his chair toppled over. We're done. We're stopping right now. Tap, tap, tap. It was getting louder, closer. Something was coming up the basement stairs. Charlie, Charlie, we're done. Goodbye. Jake cried, his voice cracking, but the pencil didn't move. It just sat there, still and silent. And then the tapping stopped. The basement door, which had been ajar, began to swing open wider, inch by inch, until it revealed the pitch black stairwell. A figure stood at the top of the stairs. David's blood turned to ice. It was tall, too tall, and its limbs were twisted, bent at unnatural angles. Its face was shrouded in darkness, but he could see the glint of its eyes, red and gleaming like embers. Who, who's there? David stammered, stepping back. The figure tilted its head as if considering him. Then slowly, it lifted one long bony arm and pointed at Jake. Run, David shouted, grabbing his cousin's arm. They turned and bolted for the front door, nearly tripping over each other in their panic. They burst outside, stumbling onto the front lawn, gasping for air. David looked back, expecting to see the figure at the door, but there was nothing there. The house was dark and silent. The basement door closed as if it had never been open. What? What was that? Jake whispered, clutching David's arm. I don't know, David muttered, shaking uncontrollably, but we're never playing that game again. Jake nodded frantically. They stood there for what felt like an eternity, staring at the house, waiting for some sign that they hadn't imagined at all. But nothing moved. The house was still and empty. Then, just as they were about to turn away, a soft, familiar sound reached their ears. Tap. 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 The tapping came from the kitchen window. David's heart stopped. Slowly, they looked up, and there it was. A face, grinning out at them from the dark, its eyes glowing red. Charlie, it whispered, lips curling into a smile. Charlie is never alone. Story number 10. The small town of Greendale was a place where rumors spread like wildfire, and in the fall of 2015, the talk of the town was Charlie, Charlie. The supposed ghost summoning game was all anyone could talk about, how you could call upon a spirit with nothing more than a sheet of paper and two pencils. Some laughed it off, saying it was just a hoax, while others swore that something dark lingered behind the game. For Claire, Maya and Jason, three high school juniors with a taste for thrill-seeking, Charlie Charlie was just the kind of challenge they couldn't resist. That's how they found themselves in the old abandoned schoolhouse on the outskirts of town one late October night. The building had been closed for decades, left to rot and decay. Rumor had it that the school was haunted, making it the perfect place for a game meant to summon a ghost. This place gives me the creeps. Maya said as they stepped through the crumbling doorway, her flashlight casting long shadows across the cracked walls. Are we sure we want to do this here? Of course, Jason said, smiling confidently. He was always the brave one of the group, never backing down from a dare. If we're going to summon Charlie, it's got to be somewhere spooky. This place is perfect. Claire, the more skeptical one, shrugged. It's just a game. I'm not worried. They made their way to an old classroom at the back of the school, its desks still arranged in neat rows as though the students had simply disappeared one day. The air was thick with dust and the smell of mildew lingered in the air. A faint breeze blew through the shattered windows, making the place feel even more eerie. All right, let's set it up, Jason said, pulling a sheet of paper from his backpack. He quickly sketched the familiar grid. Yes, on two corners. No, on the others. Then he balanced two pencils and a cross on top of the paper. Charlie, Charlie, are you here? Jason called out, his voice echoing slightly in the empty room. For a moment, nothing happened. The three of them sat in a tense silence, watching the pencils. Claire could hear the faint rustle of the wind outside, the distant sound of crickets. She was about to laugh it off when the top pencil moved. Slowly but undeniably, it rotated toward yes. Jason grinned, but there was a nervousness in his eyes now. See? Told you it works. Maya's eyes widened. Okay, that's freaky. It's probably just the wind, Claire said, but even she didn't sound convinced. The windows were broken, after all, and the building was drafty. But still, the air felt different now, heavy and oppressive. Jason leaned in again. Charlie, Charlie, do you want to play with us? This time, the pencil jerked violently, spinning toward yes with more force than before. Maya let out a small gasp, and Claire felt her stomach tighten with unease. The air grew colder, and a strange tension filled the room. 
Maybe we should stop, Maya suggested, her voice shaking slightly. Jason ignored her. Charlie, Charlie, will we see you tonight? The pencil hovered for a second before spinning, slowly, ominously, toward yes. A low creaking sound echoed through the room like footsteps on old wooden floors. Claire shot a glance at the door. Did you hear that? Maya nodded, her face pale. It came from the hallway. Jason's bravado wavered, but he forced a grin. It's probably just the building settling. This place is ancient. But Claire wasn't convinced. The sound was too deliberate, too slow. She stood up, her flashlight trembling in her hand. We should go. This is getting weird. Before anyone could respond, the door at the far end of the classroom creaked open, though no one had touched it. The sound of footsteps grew louder, tent approaching as though someone or something was walking toward them, but there was no one there. Jason, stop playing around, Maya whispered, her voice barely audible. This isn't funny anymore. I'm not doing anything. Jason hissed, his eyes wide with fear. Suddenly, the lights from their flashlights flickered and a cold breeze swept through the room, slamming the door shut behind them with a deafening bang. Claire's heart raced, and she instinctively backed away from the table. We have to say goodbye, she stammered, her voice shaky. That's the rule. We have to say goodbye. Charlie, Charlie, can we stop? Jason asked, his voice cracking. But the pencils didn't move. Charlie, Charlie, please, can we stop? Maya's voice broke as she frantically glanced at the door, her body trembling with fear. The footsteps stopped just outside the door, and then there was silence an unnatural, suffocating silence that made Claire's skin crawl. The temperature dropped even further, so cold now that Claire could see her breath. The room darkened, and then the faint outline of a figure began to take shape in the doorway. It was tall, impossibly thin, with limbs too long for its body. Its face was obscured by shadow, but its presence was undeniable. Claire's heart pounded her chest. What? What is that? Maya whimpered, stepping back until she hit the wall. We have to get out of here. Now. Now, Jason, for once, was speechless, his face pale as the figure took a slow step into the room, its movements jerky and unnatural. The pencils on the table began to vibrate, spinning violently until they flew off the paper and clattered to the floor. Without another word, they bolted for the back door. But as Claire reached for the handle, it wouldn't budge. She pulled harder, but it was stuck, as if something on the other side was holding it shut. Jason, help! She screamed, her voice raw with panic. Jason ran over, throwing his weight against the door, but it still wouldn't move. The shadowy figure was inside the room now, its hollow, featureless face fixed on them. There was nowhere to run. Suddenly, the pencils flew from the floor and slammed against the walls, as if an invisible force was toying with them. The figure took another step, then another, its dark form filling the room with an unbearable sense of dread. We have to say goodbye! Claire shouted, turning back toward the paper. Charlie, Charlie, can we stop? For a moment, the room was still. The figure stopped, its head tilting slightly as if considering the question. Then slowly, the pencils, now on the floor, rolled back toward the paper, landing on yes. In an instant, the door flew open. Without wasting a second, Claire, Jason, and Maya ran. They didn't stop until they were far from the abandoned schoolhouse, gasping for breath in the cold night air. They never spoke of what happened that night again. But Claire could still feel it, the cold presence, the sound of those footsteps, and the figure's empty, hollow face, haunting her dreams as if it was still waiting for her to return and finish the game.